even the end of last year, whenever you, we wouldn't have been saying Elvin Evans could be World Rally Champion this year. Whereas in 2020, right now, as you and I sit here across this yeah, table yeah. having a chat, I, I genuinely think he could. All right, you, you've still got Sebastian Auger and Oitanak and Thierry Neville, but Elvin there's Evans is part there, of There's that. something more to his strong performance in Monty and, and what he'd done in Sweden. <laughs> And welcome to another WRC podcast. Joining me, a legend, former legend, I'm going to say, of the WRC. He's got a big smile on his face right now. The ginger ninja himself, <laughs> Chris Meek. Um, Chris, listen, it's brilliant to uh, to sit down and have a chat with you. Um, so thanks a lot for giving us your time. Um, I suppose the first thing we've got to talk about, really, mate, is the WRC, the fact you're not in it this year. You must miss it. What's the emotions like when you're when you're at home and it's running and you know you know you're not part of it, but you know you've got the pace to be part of it. Yeah, on rally weekends when you're following it, for sure you get that, you know, uh, you get that sense that you'd still love to be there, you know. But uh, there's many things of the job I don't miss, you know. I don't miss the travel. I, you know, you don't miss going out through the door with your five-year-old hanging off your leg. It is a young man's game. I kept it going until 40, you know. And uh, like I say, I didn't get my full-time chance in the WRC until oh, 34, 35 years of age. So, um, yeah, like I say, I always knew the window was going to be short. But uh, I love uh, having more time with my family now. Um, I love exploring other things. Uh, I love just the bit of freedom and space you have without that full-time commitment and everything but I do miss it on rally weekends and you're following it but uh, in between no I am I'm, I'm content where I am when you're in the WRC you are in a bubble to a certain degree you're living in that sphere of everything in your life is focused to to trying to do the best job you can but uh, the moment you step outside that bubble and you're looking from the outside in you go yeah uh, why maybe did you worry so much about this it's just a bubble and a circus traveling around the world and boys trying to go drive faster than each other it is a special time to be in the World Rally Championship. But obviously, Citroen have gone at the start of 2020, and we saw a massive mix-up in the driver market. Oit Tanak had that massive off in Monte Carlo. <laughs> obviously, Thierry won it. Well, were we a bit surprised that Sebastian Auger wasn't on the money instantly in that Toyota? Everyone can say it's his first event in the new car, but it was Elfland's first event in the Toyota, and he... Had a mega strong performance in uh, in Monty. For sure, it takes time to learn a new car, but when when OJ moved to Ford, it didn't hamper him then, you know. So uh, nor at Citroen. Nor at Citroen. I don't know. Sebastian has been six times world champion. He's been the best driver of of you know the last ten years, the current era of WRC for sure. He's he's dominated. And uh, at one moment, maybe you can't sustain that level of energy and that level of commitment. And, Certainly when you've dominated for so long, six times World Rally Champion, uh, the energy he put into it, the focus, the desire, you know, he was a different animal than Loeb. But he's he's clever now. You know, he's, he's using all that experience. You, we can say he's off the boil a bit. He missed out in Monty. He wasn't so fast in Sweden. But I think it, but he's, he thrives look, on that. But you look now, he's only five points off the lead of the championship. He'll be there at the end of the year. I, I very much expect him to go into the the last couple are at least still with a chance of, of for the title you know let's talk about elvin evans um look it was yes sweden was great but it goes it goes deeper than that for me yeah it, congratulations you've won the rally and he did and he did it on pace but it's the difference that we've seen yeah. in him from last year to this year and that's nothing against m sport nothing against anybody at uh, m sport no but but the uh, mental he's, he's he's changed he has changed i i know exactly where it comes from when someone actually gives you a contract i believe his contract's two years when somebody actually starts putting money in your pocket to say forget about everything there's enough money to feed your family and everything which you never had before you're able to just get in the car and drive it your world changes yeah. and and you're not going from rally to rally i started to win in Argentina. my first victory is argentina 15. that's right 
And I started to build up a series of really good, strong podiums, results after results. And at the end of that, I got my three-year deal with Citroen. And I went, the next event in Monty, I was challenging Seb Ogier for the lead. I was battling for the lead in Sweden. I won Portugal. I won Finland. Rally after rally, I just had confidence. And, you know? and, it, and that, that come with someone setting a contract down yeah. and saying, right, your future's secure. Forget about everything else. All I want you to do is drive this car. And that's exactly what's happened to Elfin. Yeah. And uh, obviously he's clicked with the Toyota. Um, and uh, he has all the experience. Now he's, what, five? He's nearly 100 WRC starts, more. And uh, he has all experience. He has everything. And now he has a proper contract. So that's what makes the difference. <laughs> Right then, Elvin, come on, we're on uh, your home turf. Let's go and have a look around. Go, on. go easy on me. I've heard you're quite good on these bikes. That was mega out on the bikes and it's good for you to be able to just literally have that up the road for, for your training because I know you spend an awful lot of time training on the bike and kind of doing that cardiovascular sort of work. Yeah, no, it's great to be able to, to leave home and I'm not necessarily even have to transport the bikes, you know, and to have uh, so many options is, uh, is obviously nice to, to keep it, you know, different and, and not have to do the same thing day in, day out. Let's talk about Sweden. It was an unbelievable rally. It was a difficult rally. You know, the conditions were, you know, so unpredictable. You seem to just have the, the extra confidence and the feel in the car to be able to continue pushing and, and find grip. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, overall, I had a, a very good feeling in the car from, from the outset. Um, and I just had, you know, confidence to, to drive exactly how I wanted, not do anything heroic. I wasn't sliding the car. And uh, yeah, I was just feeling comfortable and, and the results and the, and the speed sort of came with that, you know, and, and stage by stage we were able to consistently just take one, two or three seconds and, and that was enough to steadily build up an advantage. Do WRC drivers have to focus on a particular thing, either core strength as in you're muscularly strong or, or is cardiovascular more important? You need some, some strength obviously for the protection from the impact, you know, to make sure that your, your core is stable and that you can cope with, with those big impacts. Um, and as well, you know, when you're handling the wheels and tyres, you know, the, the gravel wheel and tyre is quite heavy. So the stronger you are, obviously, the, the less fatigued you get handling those in between stages in, in a hurry. And then, of course, the, the big thing really is the, the drain of your concentration, the, the effect that that takes on your body, and, and being cardiovascularly fit really helps that. So for me, it's really about having a, a sort of blanket of, of fitness that covers all those areas. That's the physical side sorted. You mentioned the drain on the mental side. Yeah, you've got to be mentally fit, and so much of this sport is in your head. When you come into Toyota, they've slapped a two-year contract in front of you and said, listen, I don't want you to worry about what's going to happen in three or four rallies time. I just want you to focus on this one, drive it, and we've instantly seen results coming. And that's not just in the car. That's in, in you and in your, in, in your mental approach to rallying now. Yeah, I think it's something I've been, you know, working on over time. Uh, you know, I think experience plays a big part as well, and I think the longer you're in it and, and the more ups and downs you have, I think that makes you stronger as well. And, and obviously now I think a few things have, have happened together and, uh, okay, it's easy to, to jump to conclusions when you get two good results on the board, but uh, in reality, you know, it's still very early in the season and, uh, you know, there's still a long way to go, so we can't get carried away with, with what's happened in the first two rounds. You know, I said from the outset that you have to go to every rally and, and do the best you can and, and what's gone on the last two rallies is effectively out the window. Nothing really has changed and, and for me Mexico will be business as usual. What's your expectations going, going into Mexico? Because day one is going to be really tough. It's going to be tough, that's for sure. El Chocolate is always a big challenge anyway, it doesn't matter where you are on the road. Um, and it's obviously a, a huge stage and, and there is a massive cleaning effect in, in Mexico, like we know. But there's nothing I can do about it. You know, we have to go in and, and just do the, the best job we, we feel we can and see what comes results-wise. You know, it's, it's a rally normally that can be very high attrition. Uh, it's hard on the cars, it's hard on the drivers. So I think, you know, we have to go in and, and give our all, but, but also try and have to be reliable and, and come away with, you know, the best result possible. What about the, 
the rest of the year. And we've got to be careful not to get ahead of ourselves, but based on that performance, you are a genuine title contender. And it's not just the media saying it, it's the team and the, and the other drivers saying it as well. Yeah, I guess, you know, that has been uh, floated around, but ultimately my goals haven't changed. Um, you know, I've, I'm happy, let's say, with overall what we've achieved in the, in the first couple of rallies. I think it's been a, a real positive start to, to, you know, to settle into a new team and, and find a good feeling with a car, you know, from the outset. But, but I, as I've mentioned many times before, you know, the chunk of the, gra of the championship is all on gravel and that's still unknown at the moment. So we have to, you know, just focus on doing the best and, and then see what comes at the end. But nonetheless, I'm under no illusions, you know, this is a, a long and hard championship and, and we need to, you know, just stay focused and go rally by rally before uh, getting carried away thinking about any championship fights. You know, this time last year, even the end of last year, whenever you, we wouldn't have been saying Elvin Evans could be World Rally Champion this year. Whereas in 2020, right now, as you and I sit here across this yeah, table yeah. having a chat, I, I genuinely think he could. All right, you, you've still got Sebastian Auger and Oitanak and Thierry Neville, but Elvin there's Evans is part there, of that. There's something more to his strong performance in Monty and, and what he'd done in Sweden. Monty, you knew it was stage after stage. Yes, he lacked a bit of speed in the final morning when it came to the crunch. He ended up third. But uh, those times he was doing through Friday and Saturday in Monty were proper yeah. you know, that was proper but to back that up in a tricky Sweden uh, to just dominate everybody on a shortened rally uh, we're only two rounds into 14 but for me the underland tone is there for me I think he's he's got everything he needs to, to go and challenge Toyota have always said uh, to us at least we don't do team orders mm -hmm. that's not something that we do we want to just go rallying and to be fair in Sweden it didn't happen you know, and in mm -hmm. Monte Carlo I spoke to Elf and he just said no, I was off the pace on Sunday. I, I wasn't going slow to let Seb beat me. He beat me. Yeah. Uh, you know, he just yeah, beat yeah. me. How do you think, if Tommy sticks to that, the team equilibrium will work throughout the year? For me, the best equilibrium you can have is no team orders. It's simple as that. Uh, let Elfin go. It's Elfin's time now. I think it's his time to really step up. Well, do you reckon you know WRC, mate? Little, I've got a little um, little challenge for you. Just a little break. Just a little depends, breather. Depends what side of it. You've got to tell me where these clips come from, all right? You'll recognise this one straight away. Jesus Christ, Chris. Next to go. I love the panic in Paul's voice. How are we going to get over here? You didn't say a word in any of that. No, and you everyone just says, around. Everyone says that must have been the most stressful thing. To be honest, for me... It happened, the car was fine. For me, it was just a stay calm, get out of the car park. You know, panicking in that situation wasn't going to help anybody. Paul panicked a bit. Yeah. But, uh, and actually how we got out of, the out of the field onto the stage, if you actually look closely, that wasn't even a road. That was a goat track. Yeah. It was just, um, I had hit it at speed and it went up at, on the belly of the car and landed out onto the stage again. So. It wasn't actually a road. I just seen tape and a bit of an incline, and I gunned it. I said, "Right, we're getting up out onto the stage." And, and you, like you don't realise on the cameras actually it was quite a steep, yeah, like yeah. Uh, you, you just but looked it, flat. it wasn't the width of the car or the wheelbase no. of the car. It was a goat track. So, uh, I when I turned around and came back out of the cars, if that had been a three or four to four foot high bank, which I actually came in over, I wasn't getting out. It was, a, it was a classic Chris Meek moment. Jesus Christ, Chris! Oh no! Uh, who's this? You're the best in the world! Uh, Robert Reed Richard Burns. That's right, yeah. 2001 World Rally Champions. Margam Park in a Subaru P2000. Time flies, doesn't it? What's the live, yeah? Yeah. There you go. Let's end this with a tip for Mexico. I'm going to say... I'm going to say... Sebastian Ogier and my wild... For the win, and my wild card will be... Esa Pekka Lappi. Go on. Titanic. Yeah? No question. Wild card? Roven Perra. It's not a bad shout, that. Mm. It's not a bad shout after Sweden. You seem like you're in a, a, a really genuinely good place. Maybe, probably, actually, 
better than you were at the end at the end of last year. Yeah, to be honest, like I said to you last year, I felt something, something had changed. You know, I I I'd missing something. It was the first time ever a teammate kicked my ass properly. You know, and like I said, I dominated me all season, and that never happened to me before. So, um, at one moment, you have to say, right, maybe maybe it's time. Uh, I've had a good run at it. There's not many guys in the World Rally Championship entered it at 35 and come away five victories uh, within only three full seasons. So, uh, yeah, um, my time was short there, but uh, like I say, entering at 35 was always going to be like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I, I'm not denying I would have loved to have continued. I'd loved another season or two with Toyota. I think I could have offered something, but... Uh, Finally, the way things worked out, it didn't happen, and I have no, no, no regrets of the decisions that were made. You know, so um, and we've seen everyone's taken their opportunity well, Elfin and and Kelly and everything. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm comfortable. I I'm setting my targets. You know, to fulfil my life the way I need to. I need things in my life to to keep me going. And if I see the off road world as in Dakar and that type of thing to do that, that's what I'll I'll try and pursue. So uh, it's just. One chapter of your life is starting to come to a close, and another one starts. You know, so it's uh, it's where you find yourself in your own life, and you have to do what motivates you and what gives you pleasure. You know, uh, the other day it was twenty three degrees here. I was snowboarding in the morning. Don't rub it in, mate. I went on my bicycle in the evening, and I was up, and it was a perfect blue sky, and I said, "I'm one lucky bastard." Huh? Chris, mate. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much for your time and look, we we'll look forward to seeing what you get up to in the future. Are you gonna to come to a rally this year? Stick your uh, head in through the door. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well maybe we'll see you at a rally. I still need to put my helmet on to walk through the service <laughs> park. <yeah. laughs> You're a legend, Chris. Thank you very much, mate. Diamond. Cheers, Cheers, man. Top man. Take care, fella. WRC Plus on all devices, WRC Plus, all live.